Be seated. I'm blessed. What if the Lord came back 20 minutes ago? Some of you would have not made it. But you that were in the midst of worship, the Lord would have lifted you up and said, come on home. I'm old school, even though I got some new jack swing in me. Because I'm connected to my children. But old school said, when I think of the goodness, I want to see what church you come from, of Jesus. I ain't going to preach. We have a preacher. And all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. My soul cries out. My soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God. I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved through new life sublime. Life now is sweet. And my joy, brothers and sisters, is complete because I'm saved. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Come on, this is holy convocation. I said, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Now because I'm apostolically saved. My God has a name. Some call him wonderful. I don't see leadership. Some call him counselor. But at the name of Jesus, somebody call that name real loud. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. I'm going to introduce this man, but as a leader, we have so many beautiful guests with us. <coughs> and a few of them I want to acknowledge. If I don't say your name, don't take it personal. You've heard your name every Sunday. But there are some people that I must acknowledge that are apostles and bishops duly consecrated and duly elevated. No one self-made. All have coverings. And I want to address them because they're from the East Coast, West Coast. They're from Carolinas. They're from right here in the state of Florida. I just want their name. And when I call their names, I want you when they stand to clap for them because how can you hear without a preacher? And preachers that don't clap for preachers ain't preachers at all. That's how I feel. I've got to know that they're of God. We got to know you of God. Amen. I cheer my children when they were playing football at five. I would see them run even while they were running in the wrong direction. Who you might talk about tonight might be your star player tomorrow. You got to cheer them, not when they're making a million. You got to cheer them while they're broke, filing bankruptcy. But one of them you saw up here, I won't get to all of them until tomorrow, but I wouldn't be a true leader if I just went into preaching. This man can hold his own. We ain't got to set no atmosphere for this one. I can tell you all that right now. But one man that I have to say has had me over the years He's brought me to California. I don't go much. I'm not really hooked on going to the West Coast. But um, when this man calls, I go because of his favor and walk with God. Bishop, I mean, head chief apostle, Anthony Willis, stand, sir, so we can celebrate. Can we celebrate him? Shabbat, y'all do it right. Don't act like you do at home for visitors.
I appreciate him and all of his guests. Would his guests stand? All the guests that he brought with him. Y'all clap for the wonderful woman of God. My best friend, one of my five best friends is in the upper mezzanine. He knows I love him. He pastors one of the largest Word of Faith churches in, uh, we call it Buffalo, New York. It's Bethesda World Harvest Church. Apostle Michael Badger, stand, sir. Can we can we celebrate him? His lovely wife is she here? Joyce, Pastor Joyce, we stand, Pastor Joyce, so we can thank God for my sister. I love her. She has favor like no other. She can call and say, "Come tomorrow," and then persuade me that I told her yes. I don't know how she does it, but she does it every single year. I cannot go any further without thanking God for the senior father of this fellowship, Stan Bishop Michael Hope. Along with his lovely wife, Dr. Barbara. Where are you, Dr. Barbara? Dr. Barbara, God bless you. I tell you, I'm grateful. I went to preach a few months ago in Ocala. Had a great time at this church. And this woman I'm about to announce wants to meet you. Uh, You're her star right now. I thought I was, but she wants to meet you. And uh, you blessed her at a major conference, the Infinite Conference. But she is probably the gatekeeper of her city, Ocala. Apostle Lillian Turgeson, please stand so we can celebrate you. Third row, come on, y'all. Make a lot of noise there. Her husband went home to be with the Lord and left her the entire ministry. She shares it with everyone, and she doesn't make moves without trying to get me to be a part. She's not a woman trying to be a man. She's a woman protecting her man's hard work. And I think y'all should clap for that in Jesus' name. We have a pastor in this city that I met over 12, 15 years ago. When I met him, he was not a pastor here. Amen. And I met his mom through Dr. Pat McKinstry, Bishop Dr. Pat McKinstry in Toledo, Ohio. He has a church here. Most leaders won't announce when other people have a church here. This man has a booming ministry here in Orlando, Florida. He so happens to have vanilla skin, but he's chocolate through and through. Amen. He's a little Boricua as well, but he's been on TBN. He's been a host. He has been the host more than most people in his age bracket. Please stand, Prophet and Pastor Jonathan Miller. Please stand so we can celebrate. Can we celebrate Jonathan Miller? I'm almost done, but ain't nothing like honoring people. To his right is a man that may have amnesia. He's in my age bracket. I'm a little older than him. From Baltimore, every now and then when I was preaching, he would play the drums. He would get up, walk around. Now he's a chief apostle. He ain't playing. I can't dare tell him play the drums or sit down somewhere. God has elevated him. I just gave him a prophecy about three, four months ago about property and land. I watched on social media, they had trucks and trailers and dumpsters clearing, excavating acres of land for his new ministry, new facility, new school. I don't hear nobody. New medical center. I mean, he's doing it. Apostle James Spence, stand please, sir. Can we thank God for him tonight? And he came last minute. We spoke in the morning. He said, I'm sorry I didn't make it, and then was here by the evening. 
Now that's what I'm talking about. That's love. A man that I've known probably 30 years, we never were close, but we were always cordial and respectful. He came to me last night. He says, I said, man, thanks for coming. He said, man, me and my wife love you. There's no way I can't come. We've known you a long time. You've blessed us. He said, we have to be a part of your convocation. I want to thank God for his grace and the apostle Owens and his pastor, his, his cohort, his co-worker, his honey bun, his bun with honey, Tia, the first lady, uh, a prophetess. Both of you stand from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I met them. Can we, can we scream and thank God for them? Right. I have to thank God for two more people and one is not a preacher but most of the time when musicians and psalmists come that are very worldwide renowned they are renowned they do what they are they come to do well they get their honorarium or they leave it based on the love they have and then they go right home but one of the young men he's younger than I who set the trend and y'all say what you want to say you heard none of that type of music that Professor Kirk Franklin and Dr. Ty Triven and them are doing until you heard a group called Worship and Praise. Now you say what you want to say. I'm older than most of y'all except Badger. I think Badger's older than me, right? Good. And he never got his real due because when he was doing it, he was years ahead of his time. His last name just so happens to be Hall. And he is actually a real Hall. Uh, I have to, he was supposed to go home. He called, he said, I'm coming to church. I didn't bring clothes. I came to have church and get back on the plane because, oh, that's how he calls me. We are staying as long as I can get a game of spades in before, I, no, let me, We are, he said, I'm staying because that's what family does. You must give a bishop welcome for this man who is a trendsetter and a trailblazer, Professor James Hall. thank God for him and his presence here with us. The last person that I'm about to acknowledge is our speaker. Let me talk about him. If you don't or have not heard of him, you live under a rock. If you avoided his ministry, it's because you're jealous. He just so happens to be a friend of the man who tried to kill Lazarus last night. And he did, so it's your job to resurrect him. He's your friend. You just left his birthday. We saw it on social media. He and I share something in common, many things, but one is he has shared his grandmother with me. She is my spiritual mother. And he had me come to preach. She said, I want something for my birthday. He said, Grandma, anything you want? She said, I want Todd Hall. He called me last minute. Now you've got to do something for me. My grandma. I'll let him tell the rest. We also shared that he's properly covered like the man last night. And his bishop just so happens to be a hall also. I don't hear nobody and it ain't me. But his bishop looked just like us. And when I go preach for him, the bishop comes out of retirement and sits there and pushes me to preach. I gave him a word over 10 years, probably a long time ago, about a building. I described the building, told him what the building was. He didn't fully deny it, but his face looked like, I hope God's speaking. He is now the possessor of that building in Lynchburg, 
Pennsylvania. He has one church in multiple locations, one in D.C., one in Texas, one, because you can't even count them anymore, some out there near Fort Worth, Lynchburg, y'all know ramp churches, Sao Paulo, or some part of Brazil, right? My mom is from Costa Rica. And I have watched him like a big brother would because he means much to me. But I don't have to set an atmosphere for this man because his DNA is unique as mine is. People get up, they present me, I press reset, and I start over. So I just did him a favor because he can ah! by himself. It's a little stronger than mine. It's a little more connected than mine. If his grandmother is my spiritual mother, you can't imagine if that's his grandmother. The prayers that she's prayed over him since he was born. I want you, after the Samonic soloist has come, who tore us up this morning at 1 o'clock, I want you to stand and shabak all of you without reservation. You will clap. You will applaud. You will cheer. You will yell for his grace, the Honorable Bishop S.Y. Younger, because an elder that rules well. What the Bible say? Is worthy of double honor. So you will stand and we will pull every bit of anointing out of him that when he gets to his flight, he ain't got nothing left in him. In Jesus' name, please, when he has mounted this podium, stand in honor, reverence, and deference to his grace, the Honorable S. Y. Younger. Come, our sermonic soloist, sing us into the presence of the Lord. Can we thank God for Bishop S. Y. Oh, come on, y'all got to do better than that. Younger. Presiding prelate. Come on, y'all get excited. Pass up ramp churches worldwide. Remain standing a minute, everyone, except my seasoned veterans. I need y'all to understand Holy music, Sean. I have a few adversaries in Central Florida who prayed against the success of this meeting. No, no, just look at me. It didn't bother me. I don't need no thugs. It did not bother me. A plane cannot fly without adverse winds. Slippery tires, trying to drive on ice. Two slippery substances can't go nowhere. Somebody needs to cause controversy for there to be traction. Why y'all quiet? I fly on planes. I can't tell you how many aircrafts I've been on and how many millions of miles I have flown. But we almost... Could have crashed a few times, but this particular time, 
the wind was blowing against us and when we got ready to take off, it was blowing behind us and the pilot stopped abruptly. And he said, I'm sorry, that shift would have hurt. Some of y'all were ready for takeoff. But the Lord had to put your flight back in line. Y'all mighty quiet. But what excited me is we became number 26. And I needed to be somewhere, overseer dean and bishop Rockmore, I needed to be somewhere by a certain time where there was no need for me to go. So me and my crazy self with over 240 passengers on the plane decide he going to tell the flight attendant to ask the pilot how long before we get there. As if the whole flight, I'm prophesying and you don't know it. Make sure the house is fire. And I want to make sure I made people on the flight think that the flight was about me. The pilot came out only because I was a diamond medallion member, right? Don't worry, you don't know what that is. You got to fly enough. And you got to pay for the flight. You don't get status on free flights. Came over to me now, my ma manager of Delta, my associate pastor, Joe, he can tell you all these rules. He came out, he said, sir, only because you're a certain status member, I want to explain to you. And I said, sir, listen, I know it ain't about me and people in first class was laughing. I said, but ain't no need for me to be on this flight if I ain't going to make it on time. He said, now the only way I could turn the flight back for you is you have to be sick. And on that occasion, we would have to take you back to the gate. He said, but I'm going to tell you a secret. He said, that wind that shifted is now in our favor. And we're going to make up time in the air. He said, as a matter of fact, Dr. Hall, because my name is on the list, you're going to be there a little early, even though you took off late. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them I took off late, but I'm going to revive, but I'm going to arrive early. When people like Bishop Kearney from Houston was on the ground, when people like Bishop Curry allowed Younger to press the anointing into him and he was on the ground. When people like Dr. Godfrey who went, he's over there with his wife, pressed through after losing his precious mother not too long ago and danced under pressure. Wow. When people like some of you, like General Secretary Corey, People that may not say much, but my gift is so pristine. And I saw you dancing in the midst of depression, in the midst of disturbance. I danced all night. You that know me know I don't dance as much anymore, but I've been dancing all night. Because the Lord kept telling me they're going to take off late. But they're going to arrive early. was in my automobile and I closed. I want to make announcements. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now that's Shabbat. And when I got in my car, I pushed a tape that I have on my phone. I let it play through the car and I thought I pushed music because I listen to certain type of worship music. Instead, it was a voice of a woman, I don't know her name, is still in my car. And she kept saying, now! And I was like, I know I'm not playing that. Now! No, no. 
My car can't malfunction because it doesn't have a CD player and stuff like that, so it's not skipping. She kept saying, now! You preachers better listen because that land he was prophesying, it has a date on it. The date is not in numbers. The date is in a word. What's that word? That's your bop now. No, no, we're about to leave and we're going home prophetically full. You're going to sleep tonight and wake up and be there. And I asked the Lord, how did my phone not play what I pushed? He said, number one, you weren't fully watching because you was driving, so you didn't push that button. I pushed it. If be careful. If you flip the word now. You don't get the word when, you get the word one. Which says it's already done. It's done when? Hold on. We're going home like this. Who let the dogs out? The Lord has spoken to me. And he said, Todd, all of them that have come from far and near, I'm putting the anointing to win upon them. Tell them, be careful what they touch, who they touch, and why they touch. Y'all better hear me. You that are prophetic better catch me. You that are churchy, just believe us. But you that are in that level of prophetic, you better catch on this train. God said, I resisted your requests for years, but I never ignored any of them. Because you wanted everything now. But you had not won. He said, before you claim things now, finish your battle. Dance while depressed. Scream while frustrated. Now, I need to rewind this service about 12 minutes. And I'm taking you back to your happy feet. The penguins, look at me. In the movie Happy Feet. Y'all don't remember that? I really got up here to ask something, but I don't want to stop this now. I was going to ask, don't answer, how was Naomi's tea and etc. But I got caught up in a prophetic moment. I'm still going to ask, but I'm caught up. Every penguin of this certain tribe was born to sing. And when they sang, they also drew their wives to them. One penguin couldn't sing. But every time they would sing, he, he pat his feet. When he would sing, people would laugh because he had no pitch. But he would dance. Fast forward two hours and 35 minutes of that movie. It ends like this, Bishop. Then one more statement for the women and watch what happens to you. You'll be glad you stayed. You had nowhere to go.
Here's what happened. End of the movie, the penguins place to live, their domiciles are about to be destroyed. And they're singing, trying to get people to know that they can communicate, but man couldn't hear their song. Oh, y'all didn't catch it. And that penguin's girlfriend who became his wife named Glory. Oh, y'all didn't catch it. Oh, y'all didn't watch it. So your preaching's limited because you don't watch TV. She said to him, dance. And he said, they can't hear my feet. He said, dance. And he did like tiptoe. Brack, brack, brack. He picked up some friends when he was cast out of his tribe. Mexican penguins, all kind of penguins. And they were dancers. He said, dance with me. And they got together and he brat. They kept dancing. No, no, I ain't gonna do it. They kept dancing. My feet has gotten me more success than your mouths ever got. And the human beings looked and said, are them penguins dancing? He said, we can't destroy their place. They don't put their feet on it. I'm prophesying for three more minutes. When you get home, when you get to your churches, Where the soul of your feet. tomorrow. Now I said I'd be honest with two minutes left. Every woman in this place shout glory. In the book of Judges, I'm not re preaching, I'm prophesying. Chapter 21, it says, God spoke to the men of the tribe of Benjamin. Run. And he said to the men, go hide in the bushes. Judges 21. For the 38 of you women who've been praying for a husband, I'm about to give you your prescription. Because it ain't in your hips. And it ain't no longer in your lips. And it's not even in your fingertips. He said, Dean, read it. Judges 21, go hide ye behind the vineyards. Duck. Be invisible for two days. The daughters of Shiloh come to worship. The daughters of worship. Then the order was, and we're about to try it, ten of you. If they dance, claim them to be wives. If they don't, leave them untouched. What's yours ain't far. It's hiding right in here now. Your money ain't in the bank. It's probably two rows from you. But because you have not used the prescription. So at the count of three, those who follow my leadership. The dance will be 30 seconds long. 30 seconds, you might get 30 grand. 30 seconds, you might get your possessed goods back. 30 seconds, the job that denied you will call you by Monday and say, we have changed our mind. Excuse me, what is your name? Vern. 
Fern, F-E-R-N, F-E-R-N-E. I want to say something to you. Now, my prophetic is supposed to be tomorrow, but this is my night now, right? I need to tell you that God, see, you're not going to be here tomorrow, so God caught up with you. See how nice he is? Your flight late, but you're going to arrive early. Let me help you. God is about to give you, miraculously, three offices. I know you feel on in three different states. One will be out of the country because there is where you will protect your money. You will have citizenship in a country. Oh, she don't need y'all. It's me and her now. You will have some type of dual citizenship because there you will invest money and then you will train other women to do the same thing. You will be worth shortly $13.5 million. <laughs> Saw her happy feet. You'll be worth 13.5 million. You know what to do with that to make it 30 million, to make it 100 million. Wait a minute, are you married? God said, I'm gonna have to give him a dream like I did John so he can see what I'm doing in her. When Jesus was in the womb of Mary, God visited Joseph in a dream and he explained what his wife was carrying. That which your wife is carrying is of the Holy Ghost. You will donate to many charities and churches because this is what you said you would do. And y'all look mighty quiet up in here. Lady Dean, you used to be my favorite person to move like that, but you got a partner now. I hate to tell you. When Lady Dean touched you, God said, I got to do the same thing for her. Just look at somebody and say the word, now! And now it's all three of you. This prophecy is contagious. Will you tell somebody it's contagious? It's not contaminated. Tell somebody when you need God to do it, say now. Now, 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 now. Hey! What you have is contagious, but it's not contaminated. Whatever God's about to do for you, he's going to do for someone on the left of you and the right. I let them choose speakers. We bless speakers. We enjoyed the word, but I told those who did this, this is a prophetic house. That will never change. You're holding Mahasha and I. We got to close. You're holding the hand of somebody you want to see get more than you. Wait a minute. I got a text from your husband. The text was a little personal. I gave him a little rebuke. I cut that phone off. And I gave him a rebuke 
that I'm not finished giving him. But I want to tell you something. When I was prophesying to Sister Fern and overseer and overseer, the Lord threw you in my face. He said, tell her, remember, she's my anointed. Tell her, don't lose sight with what she's pursuing. Tell her, I took it to give it back. There was a tow truck. I see a tow truck. The tow truck. I see a tow truck. It's HJK761. I see a, I see a tow truck, right? So the tow truck came and possessed something that was yours today. You sang through it. You shouted through it. You smiled through it. I see clothes and a few more things stacked in the trunk that you need that you don't have. This truck looks like it's supposed to go back to Jacksonville, but it actually never made it anywhere. It got stuck on Michigan Street. Wow. Wow. The truck is on Michigan Street right now. It's on Michigan Street. This certain man and his colleague, they really want to give you your stuff back. Now, why are y'all talking? Tell oh, y'all were together? When this happened? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, listen, at the count of three, we're going to get all our stuff back. Because me and the devil had a tussle. <laughs> at the count of three, for you that actually are tired of waiting. No, you've waited, but you don't have enough strength to continue waiting. You have, wait a minute, come here. I just saw, I just saw a date over your head. You were supposed to get something a whole week ago. Did you get it? Didn't get it. Didn't show up in the lost UPS. They blamed it on the hurricane. Huh? Talk to me. Yeah? Mm. The date should have been in the teens. One company called the other company because they're mad at you. So they decided we're not going to release ours till you release yours. So they lied to you. But by nine in the morning. See, I prophesy when I'm on the premises, not when I'm going to be gone. You won't be able to fight this, but somebody lied. They took more money for medical than they should have. And your attorney who claims he likes you, he called behind your back. Good guy, but he should have never got what he got. And if I name how much he got, then people will know what's left for you and they'll try to hit you up. But let me tell you something. Ain't nothing going to go right by him. Yeah. Do you have a problem telling your age? Tell me. 55. Wonderful, 55. Did you hear me say that there were men hiding behind bushes? No, hear me. Did you hear me say that? The husband that you have is about to fully submit himself. Hold on. Here come a hush yonder. Yeah, oh yeah, you breathing hard. To your same Lord. He has a little issue with certain church people. But God said tell you. By 12 noon tomorrow. I'm going to enter into his heart. Y'all are quiet over here.
And I want you without him, even though you truly love him, to start looking for the new house on your own. And then watch if he don't say the same thing. You know when you get a miracle house, sister, this is for a screamer, when one house you get can pay for the other. I'm hearing Tuesday. I'm hearing Tuesday. They're going to claim by 9 in the morning it's in the mail. When they could have overnighted it. But nobody likes giving up money to people who they felt they don't want to give it to. Count of three. Your wife is supposed to miss her test by two points, but she going to pass. I know. She, she got a little frustrated because of the case and her mind did not retain the information. At the count of three. Now, I, I, um, I do want to say part one to you, Bishop Willis. And I want to say it like this because I don't prophesy to people as elite as yourself around people. But this is how I want to word it, and I know you're not claiming anything, but when I shook your hand yesterday, the Lord told me, tell him before he goes to bed, quote this verse, and with his stripes, I am healed. And with, not by, with. By is in the Old Testament, with. And with his stripes, we were healed. God said anything that is trying to surface that's making you physically drained. You I don't speak in tongues much either, so y'all better catch it while it's out here. It's supposed to kill you without you knowing it in your sleep, but God said, tell him by tomorrow morning. It's it's like a parasite just sucking blood. You're just tired for no reason. Could lay down all day if you chose. But God said, tell him, I don't have a work to do. I have a new work. God said, this work will pay in advance. This work is going to help you become the antibiotic of the false teachings that are now spreading across the world. They're going to ask you to teach in business meetings, bank meetings. They're going to put you on their board, not to give you money, but to give you money because of what you're going to give them. God says, I'm about to make him the eyes of Moses. Where he can help people come and navigate through their wilderness. Be still. God said, I've got your family in my hand. Be still. When I'm finished, they'll be doing just what I told you they would do. Be still. One, two, three. I don't know how three and a half works because I ain't never seen it. So don't bother me. There's another prophet here. He can probably explain it. But I want to tell you what God just said to me. Tell him this. When I open the door and I tell him I'm going to give him three and a half properties. Stop giving them back to me. Wow. Uh -uh, wow. Only you could understand it. Hallelujah. God said I didn't give it all to you to put my name on it. I gave it to you for your retirement when you got older. It's time to convert that which is spiritual into that which is natural. You're about to be something that some of us, including me that's listening, is going to have to sit down with to ask you what next steps should we take. And three people that you asked me to heal, I'll heal them. He said... Death has come regularly, but now I tell death, oh, where's thy sting? 
You also need to get ready for 22 apologies. They're coming from everywhere. But three is coming from your circle. Until they apologize, I will no longer bless them. You're about to get a new life. And a part of that life is going to be controversial because of a major decision you will have to make. But God said time for you to live long and prosper. Y'all should shout hallelujah. Okay, 30 seconds. Get ready. 30 seconds. How was Naomi's tea? I got pictures. Y'all posted everything on Facebook. My men ain't post nothing except Pastor Darius. But I saw it. It was wonderful. I think I saw a real ballerina. Did y'all enjoy the ballerina? Melissa? Oh, one of our own. Yeah, let's thank God for her. I heard y'all had fantastic food. And I heard y'all were all decked out, looking cute. Thank you for leaving me with your husbands and boyfriends. But how was man cave? (laughs) Don't care what you say to them, there'll be no pillow talk. I swore them to secrecy, and I know half of them going to tell it. In the minute of a good moment, yes, Bishop said. (laughs) On tomorrow night, he's not in here, but our own vice bishop, Bishop Brian Pleasant, come quickly, please. He will be the speaker at Morning Glory. I don't hear nobody at 9 a.m. Ain't he clean? See, I'm old, because that look like two suits. But everybody's been saying, that man fly. I just got to get ready for it. Uh Uh-oh, hold on. Who said yes, he is? Where his wife? Go tell him. You better be on time tomorrow. <laughs> With all that that's going on, thus saith the Lord, 9 a.m. <laughs> he will be our, I'll talk more about him later, our speaker, and I want all of us here for Morning Glory. Would you clap for the messenger and the angel <laughs> who will deliver the message? <laughs> then at 11 o'clock, somebody shout 11 o'clock. I will be the speaker at 11. I will ask Brian Pleasant. I will ask if Rockmore is available, a prophet, Bishop Rockmore, if uh, Bishop Brian Martin is here. I will ask those three and if Bishop Kearney is here, she will be a fourth one, that we would have, oh, The service will be here. The talk show will be here, and it'll be on radio at 12. But it will be here. I mean, radio at 11 live. We will sit up here with a table, and we will debate respectfully whether new church is taking over old church and whether this takeover is healthy. Where's Bishop Pleasant? What were you going to teach on that I took over? This level has expired. We're going to include that in that because I know how risky you are. So I'm going to say the side I'm going to be on is old church is still valid. No, no, I don't need y'all on my side. I'm going to win my side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work for mine. 
the speakers that I've volunteered, you can choose whatever side you choose. But the side you choose better be the side you use it. In my church, I still use old school methods. I let the young people do what they do, and I just look at them and be like, go for it. But you ain't going to see me twerking. See, y'all didn't catch that. Bishop, we don't twerk. No, it just looked like it. We got rebuked for the look. Oh, yeah. Baby, come here. But at the end, I promise you, I'm going to braid the hair and we're all going to win. But I need y'all to come with honesty because there are people that don't go to church for church anymore. They go for a certain style. My opening scripture would be, I follow Peter, I follow Paul, I follow Apollos. Then one say, we follow Christ. I'm going to kill that group that say we follow Christ. Because it's obvious you didn't read it right. Without a leader, you can't reach it. So that's a group that's saying, I ain't a member of no church. I don't believe in church like I used to. I got to crucify y'all because y'all dangerous. How can you hear? I got my online pastor. Well, let him online bury you. Let them online Christian your babies. Even when I was young, I didn't do it. There'll be preachers on TV that was used my of God, and they'd say, come and touch the TV screen. I said, no, nah, no. Nah. Put your hand on my hand. No, nah, no. Nah. I'm going to my pastor. See, y'all weren't ready to that me. I ain't going to touch no screen. I went straight to my path. I'm on my way to church. What I need to touch the TV for? I'm going in real time. All right. We're closing right here. Dr. Mixon can say good night. 30 seconds of dancing now that you don't want to. And then the food trucks are outside. Fresh food. One of them are members of our church. Fresh food is out there. You tasted it yesterday. That food is good outside. Because we didn't let any old body put food in any of our people. Count of three. You would just jump up and start. Hold on. You start doing what you're doing right there. Young lady with the striped pants on. Where are you from? Talk loud. Tyler. Texas. Did you go to school? You got a student loan? I can't hear you. Okay, that's a student loan. You got financial aid, you may have to pay some of that back. You know how that works? Anybody went to school and got a fine? Oh, okay. I was going to help you get excited because God said he's about to pay all of your bills off. But that's what I was going to do. God said, I'm no longer visiting her heart over people until I'm done with visiting her about him. I'm done. Tell her she is to get her joy back for herself. And about time she gets back where she lives, I will rain down on her and some little person. God said, I'm going to rain down on both of them to show her who I am. At the count of three, your feet, your feet, Johnny got good feet, he don't use them all the time, but your feet, Henry Channel don't dance as much because when he dance he fall out, but just your feet, no he loved God, but after the fifth step, pow, at the count of three, the devil's going to regret that he touched anything, your father, your father was denied bail. You're, you're not certain. He's in 33rd. I don't know what that is. Explain that to me. 
He's at the county jail right now. Oh, okay. Was he supposed to have an appointment a couple of weeks ago? They denied him that appointment. They don't want to let him out, but they got him in there too long. It's really too long. But because of fake court-appointed attorneys, there's an issue. But the Lord said, tell you, give me 36 hours, and I'm going to work on this. Count of three, let me hear it. <laughs> Young man that was dancing with the white shirt on, you look clean, dark suit, wave at me. Scream out your name. Wallace, did you go to college? What system pay for that education. You are. What'd you say? I need to hear him. Financial aid. You got a hundred percent for how many years? Then you ain't got no, you know, you can't really. Is this your first year? You can't get no real degree with one year. So let me help you. I think I went to school. What degree y'all get for one, one year? No, associate is two years. You ain't getting nothing for one. That's how I can tell who lied about college. But I want to help you. When you dance, two things are going to happen. God's going to restructure your education. And number two, I know you may not get happy over this. You're going to have the finest, happiest wife that a young man has ever had in his life. And what's crazy is she already claimed you. Count, he, he, he get nervous. No names, Holy Ghost. She's already, how long? Where is she? North Carolina? So what's the state of Virginia? Oh, see, you shouldn't play with me. I'm not that guy. All right. At the count of three. I ain't going to embarrass nobody. But at the count of three. Did you find her or did she find you? Huh? Count of three. In the state of North Carolina or the state of Virginia? She found you where? Right before boot camp? What's Virginia? You didn't know her then? Did she know you? Y'all met right before boot camp and just fell in love. At the count of three. <laughs> Young man walking behind John. What's your name? Greg what? Rest? West? 
Can I ask you a question? Where is Raheem? Come here. West. Put the jacket down. Clap your hands seven times hard. In your hands is a shot of radiation treatment for him. Does he go to your church? He does. He's asked God in private, heal my pastor. He don't need a license. He's going to be preaching. He's not going to lay hands on your head, but he's going to grab your shoulders. There's a hole the size of a pin. I'm not a doctor. Somewhere between... I don't know how to describe it. But it's down in the lower parts of your colon. And from this pinhole, the doctors don't know how to explain it. They're trying to find out how did the blood get to a certain place. Scared you too. I know you're strong, but now the Lord's showing me the real you. We need you to stay. But I also need God to astonish the doctors. What would make you a living miracle is the doctors... Becoming astonished. When I tell you, you will stand in front of him. You will tell him, you've done me a lot of favors, but tonight I'm returning it. When you touch his show, I see you in his room trying not to cry with your face down. At a wall in a chair. You moved the chair from where it was because you didn't want to see him in that situation, but you stayed in the room. But the chair is against a wall. You also sleep easy. But I want to help you understand that the only thing that's going to get him healed is what the Bible said, the effectual fervent prayers. Stand in front of him. Oh, yeah, he ready. No, he ready. Right now, he's you. Everything you put in him, all the words you put in him, all the faith and prophecies you put in him, you're about to get it back. You don't have to ask God, why won't my bishop pray for me? Pray over me. Come see me. Prophesy. It ain't my job. It's the job of the young man standing in front of you. At the count of three, while they dance for 30 seconds, Mixon will send you home. He will put his hands on your shoulders. Oh, he's ready. That's the fire of God. Good God. One, two, one, two, one, two, three.
baby too. That's how we go home. and want to do an interview about an article and want to do an article about his father about a situation that happened back in 2020 to help him get out. Pastor Fern was our T speaker that I brought in and everything you just spoke, we it was spoken in the T. need somebody to believe and look at a neighbor as we get ready to go and say, he's talking about me. 